I want to paint you a picture of um, desert sand, sand dunes and a road, tar road running through the desert. There's nothing else, no trees, absolutely nothing. And each day that I went to the front line with my fixer, we were basically bombed from the air. And there's really nothing scarier that I've experienced in life than being shelled. Um, the sound and the shock waves of, of the bombs going off um, and, and just that sense that you're completely vulnerable. You don't know where to hide, you don't know what to hide behind, that effectively you could die at any second. So just remember that story I've just told you. Um, when I went to the counselor, Rene, he realized that because I'm a visual person, he's going to use guided meditation to help me process what I'd lived through. So, first of all, he gave me a piece of paper and said, Kim, please write down the 10 most traumatic events you've lived through. That one from Libya was on the top, and then Ernesto being burnt in, in, in the East Rand was number two. So long story short, he says, okay, Kim, take that memory and imagine that that memory is a film and put it in the little film canister. So now I'm with my eyes closed, I'm in meditation and he says, go into the back of a movie theater, open the door and walk into the movie theater and walk up the stairs to the projection room and basically put that movie of yours into the projector and then look through the little projection hole at the screen and turn the projector on and watch yourself running down the dune, getting in the car, being shelled and, and coming out of harm's way. So the magic there of guided meditation was for the first time ever, my conscious brain was actually overriding the memories of what I'd lived through and was creating separation. So what, what that means is instead of me living in the experience that I can't talk about, I'm now processing it in the conscious mind. And this was the amazing start of the process of guided meditation that, that's been documented as one of the better ways of, of helping soldiers, journalists, firemen, policemen with, with PTSD. It's that separation from the event and the memory that starts to help you heal the events. So the yoga practice has been really uh, amazing help for me in journalism. The point I want to make about this is that, you know, I'm not a yoga evangelist. I know it's amazing for de-stressing us, but find your own way to deal with the stress. Any form of exercise is obviously great. And one message I can give is that, you know, drinking endless cups of coffee and being on that constant energy high all the time is not good for you. Within the stresses of what we live through, it's about shifting the energy of the stress. And what I mean by that is if you don't shift the energy, in other words, go, to, go for counseling or find your own way to deal with the pressure, it's going to manifest in your life in some way. That could be through um, your physical body breaking down. You may start to get sick. You may start to get flu all the time. These sort of symptoms of stress will affect your body. Obviously, it could affect friends and family, so you're going to have a negative effect on people around you. Um, or, of course, it can affect your mental health that you're stressed all the time. So my advice is just start to process what you live through in your own way so that you, you, know, you shift this energy. It doesn't manifest negatively in your life. One thing you could do is create what I call a safe space in your house or with friends, depending on your living environment, where your friends and family just listen to you. Because listening is a very important gift in life, which in the modern era not a lot of people do. So just talking at length about what you've lived through helps to process what you've seen and lived through. So when I mentor younger photojournalists, which I do at the moment, I say to them, 
you have boundaries you can create boundaries yourself so quite often freelancers will take on any assignment um, this is not out of a space of judgment I talk like this but they'll take on anything without drawing a boundary and saying okay I'm uncomfortable to do this because maybe I don't have safety equipment for instance I'm sure Robin Comley who used to be my photo editor at the star will not mind me telling this anecdote at the star a lot of our, our stories concerned a team going to interview a bereaving family and I found those assignments so uncomfortable that I put my foot down I went to Robin the one day and I said listen Robin with respect you know please don't put me on these assignments I just can't deal with them and of course as a, as a great photo editor that she she was still is she said absolutely no problem and I understand if you have covered stories most importantly and you feel like you need help professional help you must push for it it's extremely important so leading on from that I know a number of good friends and photojournalists and other journalists of course I just speak mostly from photojournalism point of view who covered the Marikana massacre who have still not seen anyone not spoken professionally to anyone you know and that really that's something I'd like to help change and I'd like the industry to look at because it's completely abnormal to go to work one morning and by the end of the day see over 30 people killed in front of you. Us as journalists need to make sure that this topic of mental health is as important as all the other points that we deal with as journalists. I think most of us strive to be better than the rest of the fraternity around us. We strive to maybe in the photojournalism world win awards, we enter awards, so on and so forth. We're always striving, we're pushing to be better. This is good, but one thing you must remember is that you're beautiful and you are awesome as you are. So I think one of the scourges of the modern ages is that we're always trying to be better and achieve and be you know faster at this or better at that and just slow down a bit just breathe and also for me realize that you've got the, your whole life ahead of you you know I think you need to create space for yourself to understand that you don't have to be rushing around all the time <music>